Hello again. Today we continue uh, our introductory lecture to algorithms design and analysis representing algorithms. How to express algorithms in a clear, precise and unambiguous manner. There are four ways to represent algorithms. The first one in terms of natural language. For our problem to find the largest item for example, we can write the following statement. Assume the first item is the largest. Look at each of the remaining items in the list. And if it's larger, or each item is larger than the largest item so far, make a note of it. The last noted item is the largest in the list when the process is completed. So this is the algorithm described in a natural language. There are some advantages. The most important is this notation is familiar. However, we cannot execute this notation on computers and it's re rarely used for complex or technical algorithms. The second way to describe algorithms is in terms of formal programming language. For example, here we have the C++ code to find the largest item in the list. This is the list. Max is pointed to list of zero. We start a loop. Inside the loop, we compare each item with the max. If the item is larger than the max, then we store in the max that item. And we continue looping. After finishing, we can print the max value or output it. The advantages of this form of representing algorithms is it's precise and ambiguous, written in a way that you can directly execute it uh, on computers. However, some disadvantages can be too level for algorithm design. It has syntactic details which are not important at the algorithm design phase. Not familiar for the person who is not interested in this programming language. The third form of representing algorithms is in terms of CD code. For example, this is the CD code to find the largest item in the list. Do you see we are free to write here get array list and its size n, assign max equal to sub one for i, etc. Advantages, it's a middle solution between the uh, natural language way of representing algorithm and terms of programming language, middle ground compromise. It resembles many popular programming languages, relatively free of grammatical rules, only well-defined statements are included, a programming language without details. However, you cannot execute the algorithm written in a procedure code. There is additional step. You have to code it in some programming language and after that you may execute it. A procedure code is a compact and informal high-level description of a computer programming algorithm that uses the structural conventions of some programming language, but typically omits details that are not essential for the understanding of the algorithm such as subroutines, variable declarations, and system-specific code. There is no standard pseudo code syntax available. A program in pseudo code is not unexecutable, as I mentioned, and flowcharts can be thought of as a graphical alternative to pseudo code. Pseudo code consists of natural language statements that precisely describe the steps of an algorithm or program. Statements describe actions and they focus on the logic of the algorithm or program, avoids language specific elements. Written at a level so that the desired programming code can be generated almost automatically from each statement. Steps usually are numbered, subordinate numbers and or identification are used for dependent statements in selection and repetition structures. Some constructs 
usually used in uh, pseudocodes, assignment, computation, compute, assign, increment, get, display. Uh, do you see here you can say get variable one, two, or input. You are free to do that in pseudocode. Selection structures, F, uh, single F selection, and double F selection, the single if then and the double if then else uh, and uh, you are familiar with these structures A switch uh, we switch to any of these cases depending on the expression repetition such as while do while for uh, loops, etc. Here we have a pseudo code uh, express an algorithm to get two numbers, for example, A and B. From the user, and we have to test to if B is not zero, because if B is zero, then uh, we cannot continue uh, error division by zero. And if B is not zero, then display the quotient using, write it using a procedure code. So we first get uh, dividend and divisor. We check if divisor equals zero, then we display error message and we exit the algorithm. Otherwise, if it's not zero, we compute quotient, quotient, uh, and display the result. This is the pseudocode. The last way to represent algorithms is flowchart. A flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm. Once the flowchart is drawn, it becomes easy to write the program in any high-level programming language. There are uh, several symbols uh, used uh, in flowcharts. Uh, these are some of the symbols. Here we have the start terminate, usually. We start the uh, algorithm by this symbol, and we terminate it by this symbol as well. Here is the processing. If we have A equal B, C equal X minus Y, etc. Input output, here we can read or input A, B, C. Decision making, here we can write, for example, A greater than B, yes or no. Uh, connector and the flow lines. There are uh, other symbols. Uh, used in flow charts. Flow ch chart constructs sequence. Do, do you see here? Start, step A, step B, step C, and decision making start we check for a decision. If it's true, we perform some action. If it is false, we perform another action. Not only one of these actions is performed, depending on the condition. Switch case, here, uh, depending on the value, we switch to one only of these cases. And there is, uh, for example, a switch statement in a C++ programming language. Looping, several forms, do while loop, start, do a task. We have here condition. If the condition is true, we loop again. So we will loop here while this condition is true. When it become, becomes false, we exit the loop. 
while loop start, we here have condition. If the condition is true, we loop, and we will loop while the condition is true, and exit the loop if the condition is false. For example, uh, draw a flow chart to find the largest of three numbers, A, B, C. We have the numbers A, B, C. It's uh, easy, but it's an example how to draw the flow chart. We compare uh, if A is greater than B and A is greater than C, then A is the largest. Otherwise, the largest is the uh, larger from B and C. So uh, start, read A, B, C. A greater than B. If yes, we compare A and C. If A is greater than C, then we print A since it is the largest. Note that we reach this point if these two conditions are true. Here, if A is greater than B, but A is not greater than C, less than, then C is the largest. However, if A is not greater than B, then we compare B and C. And the, if B is greater than C, then uh, yes, we print B, else C is the largest. You uh, may include your connector as well. So this is how to uh, draw a flow, ch flow chart for finding, finding the largest number of among three numbers. Here is another example. Find the average of the first in natural numbers. We can write it in different ways. Read n, and we may initialize sum to zero as well, and sum equals sum plus n. n equals zero. If yes, we display the uh, average sum over n. If no, we decrement n and loop backward. So this is one way with decrement counter. You, uh, I wrote the program in an increment manner. So you can write the Python program for this flow chart. Here is the program in Python. Print. Uh, calculate an average of the first in natural numbers. You input, enter a number in n. In Python, you have to convert n to num integer, since here it is uh, it's entered in Python as a string. Uh, average and sum are cleared. For num in range 0 to n plus 1 with step 1 every time you add to the sum num. After completing this loop, here note the identification. So you will loop here. This average is outside the loop. Average equals sum over n, and you print the average. So these are simple examples how to draw a flow chart. Uh, and this is another flow uh, example. If you want to find the sum of odd numbers up to n numbers, up to n. Do you see here not etc plus n up to n numbers? So we can organize two counters and clear the sum. Read n. Uh, is i the counter for the, the number of uh, items we want to sum? Is it less than n minus 1? Then we increment j by 2, since we want to add only odd numbers. And we increment i by, by 1 and each time 
we add j to the sum. After finishing, we here output the sum. And uh, please write the Python code for this flowchart. Uh, and for now, thank you.